This is the Korg Key Stage MIDI controller. Yes, Korg is now in the MIDI controller game. Well, they were before, but this is much more serious. The key stage is MIDI 2.0 compatible, which means this keyboard should offer better integration and control than previous gen controllers. And it has some unusual features that I was surprised to find. So in this video, we'll look at everything from dock control, key feel, connectivity, and the interesting stuff that sets this keyboard apart from the rest. This is not a sponsored video, but Korg did send me the key stage to try out and share what I learned with you all. Let's go through the biggest highlights first, and then I'll talk about how this keyboard compares to the competition. So the key stage is a MIDI controller, no onboard sounds. This keyboard is meant to be connected to your computer and play virtual instruments through your DAW, like Ableton Live, Logic, but this is the first unusual feature. This MIDI controller has audio outputs and a headphone out. That means that you can use this as an audio out for sounds coming from your computer or your iPhone or iPad. You can select the key stage as your audio output device in your DAW. And yeah, now I hear my DAW through my headphones connected to the key stage. Anyway, like I said, this is a MIDI controller for your DAW, but you can also connect the key stage to hardware synths with the MIDI out ports in the back. And unusual feature number two. Let's talk about these screens and the eight knobs. We're not used to seeing something like this on a keyboard controller. The long strip here actually houses eight screens that sit below each of the knobs. It looks like it extends all the way to the right side, but that's kind of just for style. There are actually eight individual screens under this little strip. There is a slightly larger screen to the left, but we're used to seeing screens like this on other MIDI controllers. Okay, the eight little screens display parameters from your DAW. So for example, I've got an Ableton plugin loaded up and I can see the eight macro parameters showing on the eight screens corresponding to each of the knobs above. And it shows the unit of measure as well. Kilohertz, percentage, decibels. So I tried this with Native Instruments Complete Control plugin as well, and it shows the parameters from this plugin on these tiny screens as well. Pretty cool. You don't see this working on most MIDI controllers. However, I couldn't get parameters to show up for other plugins, just complete control. Maybe more will be compatible in the future. The eight screens also worked very well when I loaded Korg's own WaveState native software instrument. By the way, if you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos on music production on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll be sure to make it worth your while. So I loaded WaveState Native standalone and check it out. The parameters are mapped to the knobs and the screen. The screen shows the name of the controls and I can even cycle through presets with the value buttons or the value knob. The little screen also shows settings for the keyboard and you can also see ARP options as well here. You can use the page plus and minus buttons to navigate edit screens that have more parameters. The larger screen handles menus as well as showing you the name of your plugin, your track name, and lets you access sub menus for ARPs, chords, and settings. By the way, the knobs here are not endless encoders, but they communicated well with Ableton Live to match the position of the virtual knob, so you're not twisting to find the right position. I usually prefer endless encoders to knobs with a start and stop position, but with the integration, these actually work pretty intuitively. Now, we've seen this knob and screen feature on a keyboard before, the Novation SL Mark III. That keyboard has more Ableton integration features than the key stage. That one was really built for Ableton Live.
Okay, let's talk about the key bed. First of all, the key stage comes in two sizes. I've got the 49 key version here, and there's also a 61 key version as well. The 49 is $600, and the 61 is $700. The key bed is semi-weighted with polyphonic aftertouch. We're seeing more polyphonic aftertouch these days. You'll also find it on the new Native Instruments S-Series keyboard. You can use the key stage to play MPE instruments as well, but they're really only sending the extra poly after touch info, no slides and glides. They've used an ASM keybed here. This is not Fatar or a Korg developed keybed. The keybed feels fine, typical for a keyboard at this price. There is a semi-satisfying push when you press in further to activate the poly aftertouch. We're seeing several keyboards coming out with poly aftertouch these days. What do you think? Is this something you'd like on your next MIDI controller? Comment below. Now, I'm used to playing a hammer action keyboard on a daily basis, and that feels very different. But if you're used to synth keys, this will feel familiar. You can adjust the velocity curve in the settings menu. And you've got pitch and mod wheels on the left side. The pitch and mod wheels have a nice rubbery feel, even though I think they're just plastic. Above that, you've got octave up and down buttons that also work as transpose up and down with the shift key. So MIDI 2.0 is where Korg says they have an edge over other controllers. They say the key stage is compatible with pretty much every major DAW out there, but what that means in practice is yet to be seen for most DAWs. At launch, Ableton Live and Core Gadget integration works well. For Ableton Live, you'll get some useful stuff right out of the gate. Transport controls are right here. Play, stop, record, loop, and metronome on and off. You also have an undo button by pressing shift and exit. You can navigate tracks using shift plus the value buttons, and the value knob can be used to move the playback position. As soon as you load an Ableton device, you'll see your macro parameters on the eight screens as I showed you before. Also on the bigger screen to the left, you'll see the plugin name and also the track name on the top right. Now, given that they've offered a lot of Ableton integration, there is a lot missing too. You actually can't launch clips or scenes for one. They could have mapped the big encoder here. That would have been a nice addition. Mixer control is also missing. The key stage doesn't automatically map to the Ableton mixer. So no track volumes or pan or send controls. This seems more like an instrument controller than a DAW controller. But don't forget, you've got those transport controls. So even given the MIDI 2.0 capability, you're not getting a lot more than some of the competition. Artoria's new Keylab Essential keyboard will give you one big screen with lots of feedback from Ableton plugins. Novation's launch key will give you the same, and both the Artoria and Novation keyboards will give you more drum pads and clip and scene triggering. But Korg has another unique trick up its sleeve. If you load a sound generator, you can use the value buttons and value knob to cycle through programs or presets if your sound generator can accept those MIDI commands. And then you can use the knobs to control MIDI CCs. And it's customizable, of course. You can also save settings to a user page. Now, check it out. This works automatically with Korg's own native software instruments. I loaded the WaveState native instrument and chose the WaveState scene on the key stage, and it mapped everything right away. I can navigate presets, adjust parameters, This is nicely done, but remember that's just for Korg software instruments that are called native. It didn't work when I loaded up the Triton plugin in my DAW. So this sort of software integration isn't new either. Native Instruments and Artoria keyboards both integrate extremely well with their own software instruments. And with Native Instruments and KS Standard, that integration extends to plugins from lots of other companies as well. 
Okay, let's move on. So Korg has included ARP and chord features with the key stage, and these features are built into the keyboard itself, so you don't need software to make them work. That's a good thing because you can use these features with an external synth as well. Press the ARP button to turn on the arpeggiator. You can use the ARP with your DAW or an external instrument you've connected by MIDI. There are lots of options to control the ARP here, which is really nice. You press page, plus or minus to navigate more options like gate, swing, ratchet controls, and more. The arpeggiator they've included is as good as the best ARPs on MIDI controllers out there. The key stage's chord mode is really, really nice as well. And here's unusual trick number three. The chords included are actually sets of complementary chords meant to be used to create a piece of music or a song. So it's not just a set of seventh chords, for example. It's better, in my opinion. You can select a chord set and play complementary chords with one finger. You can write a song like this. There's also this strumming effect as well. Yet another unusual feature you don't find on most MIDI controllers. You can save your favorite chords to a chord set and adjust the chords themselves. By the way, a quick word on the build. The keyboard is very compact and decently lightweight. The knobs have a nice quality feel. The buttons have an audible click, which I don't really care for. The screens are nice and have a familiar Korg screen look to them. And here's unusual feature number four. They've included an expansion plate that can be used as a sheet music stand or even as a laptop stand, depending on how you install it. This is pretty cool and a laptop stand is very useful on a MIDI controller. The only other keyboard that comes with a laptop stand like this is the Artoria Keylab 88. On the back, you've got the option of power over USB or using an adapter. It's also got a power button, which some of you really like. There's actually an auto power off function as well on this keyboard. By default, it turns off after four hours if you don't touch anything. You can customize the auto off time in the menu. As I mentioned before, you have audio output and a headphone out and ports for a damper and expression pedals. And of course, the MIDI in and out ports. Now, the competition is pretty steep at this price point for MIDI controllers. If you want clip and scene triggering for Ableton Live, the Novation Launch Key offers that with many of the other features you have on the key stage. If you want virtual instrument control, Artoria and Native Instruments will give you more in that area with their own software platforms. The core key stage has MIDI 2.0 built into it, but at launch, it doesn't really offer a whole lot more over the competition. Hopefully they can build more features into it in the future. I'd like to see mixer control with the eight knobs and the screens below. That would be great. Hopefully they can evolve this keyboard to provide tight compatibility with other DAWs, especially with the promise of these eight screens here. Let's see what they do. If you're interested in buying the key stage or any of the other keyboards I mentioned in this video, you'll find links to the best prices below the video and in the first comment. If you want to see my reviews of other keyboards, check out my channel and don't miss out on my brand new Native Instruments S88 keyboard review. You don't want to miss what Native Instruments has updated in their DAW workflow. Thanks for watching and make the music you love. See you in the next video.